Welcome to our class on Chassidus. We're going to be learning this week a beautiful Chassidic discourse from the Rebbe. The name of the Chassidic discourse is called Kedoshim to you. You should be holy. The Rebbe said this Chassidic discourse in Shabbos, Parshas Kedoshim. That year was the 28th day of the month of Nisan. It was also the Shabbos that blessed the month of Iyar in the year Tafshin Mem Aleph 41 years ago. So again, the Chassidic Discourse is based on the verse in this week's Torah portion where it says, Kedoshim Tiyu, you should be holy, Ki Kadoish Oni, because I am Hashem, I'm holy. There's another verse that says, Yiskadishtem, you should be holy, V'yisem Kedoshim, and you should be holy. So again, you have three times, Kedoshim Tiyu, you should be holy, V'yiskadishtem, V'yisem, three times. And Hashem says, because I am holy. So the Medrash says as follows, it gives an analogy of a king that the people in his country made him three crowns. So they deliver him three crowns. So what does the king do with three crowns? So he takes one crown, he puts it on his head, no, and he takes the two crowns, you can only get one crown, and he puts it on the head of his children. So the Medrash says the same thing also, that the people, we crown Hashem with three crowns. We say Kadosh, 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 three times in the prayer, so we say Kadosh. So what does Hashem do with these three crowns? So one Kadosh he puts on his head, and the other two he puts on the head of the Jewish people. And that's why it says, speak to the Jewish people, Kadoshim. You should be holy, Vizkadishtem, Yisim Kadoshim. Those are the three crowns. That's what the Medrash says. Now, so the Rebbe says like this, even though in the uh, in the Medrash it seems that um, Hashem only gave the Jewish people two crowns, but the fact is that, that since it says you should be holy, because I am holy, the third crown that I'm holy, that one that he put on his head, and it says in the same verse of Kedoshim to you, so Obviously, the third crown, the third Kaddish, also has a connection with the Jewish people. Technically, he gave us two. But the one that he keeps is connected to the one he gave us. So we have a connection to all three. And Rebbe says, you, you could say, that's why it says in the Medrash that the, the, the people of the country made him three crowns. Because the Jewish people also call the people of the country. So we have a connection to all the three crowns. So there's something about the three crowns. So what is the idea of the three crowns? Rebbe explains like this. The Rebbe says it's based on what it says in the Mishnah in, P- in Berke Avos, which that year, that Shabbat, was when they learned the first uh, 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 chapter of Berke Avos. See, it's a little different schedule. So it says as follows. There are three things the world is standing. What are the three things? Torah, prayer, and good deeds. Torah, avoid the Gemil's son. So the world is standing on three things. Learning Torah, prayer, and doing mitzvahs. And it's brought down in the Chassidic discourses that these three components of Torah, learning Torah, prayer, and doing mitzvahs, is corresponds to the three Kaddish, the three holinesses. And like the, the Rebbe brings, that, that the Altar explains in the Kutti Torah, is classical Chassidic discourses on the Parsha, and actually a Parsha somewhere, which we read, uh, you know, as the Rebbe saying, we read the, on Shabbat and Mincha, that Shabbos, that the three crowns, which is com- which is connected to the three kadosh that the angel that the, that the angels say. So the first kadosh is the avoid of milmatolamayla, which means we we transform ourselves, we transform the phys- physical world, and we make it a godly place. The second kadosh is milmayla lamata. That's when the energy comes down from high down to this world, and the third kadosh is when it goes from high down to low and even lower. So again, to recap, so there are three Kaddish. One is Mamatla we do our work down here. The other one is where the light comes down from on high. And the third one is it comes down from on high, but it goes down even deeper. And these are the three components of Torah, Avoid and Gemil's Chasadim. In other words, as follows. I was going to explain. The first Kaddish which is referring to, we said, means we do our work down here and we elevate the world. That's the work of prayer. Why? Because what's prayer? Prayer is transforming the world, transforming yourself, transforming your animal soul. Now, this Kaddish, when a person transforms himself, and Hashem gets this beautiful crown that, that's created by our prayers, so Hashem goes ahead and, and uses that for His crown. Like it says that we create crowns for Hashem, where's the crowns created from? From our prayers. 
So the point is that our prayers is Malmatalamaila, and that's what Hashem uses to put a crown on his head from our prayers. Now, what's the idea behind it? They're explaining like this. What does Kadesh mean? Holy. So Kadesh means holy, but what does it mean, holy? Kadesh means it's holy, it's separated, and it's disconnected from down here. This physical reality, and we're limited by the physical reality, but then this Kadesh, we're elevated from the, from the physical reality. And that's basically the idea of prayer. That there's a ladder that's sitting on the ground, like it says in reference to Jacob's dream, there's a ladder on the ground, and the head of the ladder is on high. In other words, you're going, you're elevating from the physical onto the spiritual, up to the point that you want to leave the world, you want to transform the animal soul, you're willing to go on a serious nefesh, you're willing to go on self-sacrifice, you're willing to give it all up to have a godly experience. In other words, when you stand in prayer, you stand totally like a, a servant that's standing in front of his master, physicality, materialism, uh, worries, nothing. Nothing disturbs you because you're totally on a spiritual high up to the point of mysterious nefesh. And <clears throat> this, therefore, because this powerful Kaddish, when a person disconnects in the world and is connected to Hashem, so that's why Hashem takes this prayer and puts it on his head. So prayer is the first level of Kaddish. Again, so to recap before we go further, what's the first Kaddish? The first Kaddish is Mamatalamaila, transforming the physical world up to the level of Mesir Snefesh, prayer, and that's what Hashem puts on his, on his head. What's the second Kaddish? And what's the third Kaddish? Which we said is Melmaila Lamata, which means godly energy coming down into this world. That's a Torah study, because you know, Torah study is the Torah of Hashem, the godly Torah, and when you learn Torah, you bring godliness into the world, not elevating, you bring godliness into the world, and also acts of kindness, Gemilos Chesed, charity, and all the mitzvahs, that means you're bringing godliness into the world, Melmai Lamata. And those are the two holiness that Hashem gave to the Jewish people. Hashem gives us the ability to learn Torah, do mitzvahs, and bring godliness into the world. And the Rebbe says, based on this, we understand what the, what the verse says in the prophets, that he didn't stop and to, to adore it and to, uh, and to, and, and, and to, love, it, uh, to love it until he called it, Biti, my daughter, that's one expression, Achoisi, my sister, and then he called it the level of what? Of mother. What's the, three, what's the three components? So the relationship of a mother is, that's referring to the, 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 the route of, of, of work of prayer, up to the point of Messiris Nefesh. A mother self-sacrifice. Why? Because Imi, we know in the Sfirot, so you have Av and Aim, the mother, the, the father and the mother. The father's referring to Chachma, and the mother's referring to Bina. Why? Because from Bina comes all the Midas. So Imi, on a spiritual level, is referring to the sphere of Bina. And that's actually the world, which is called the world of freedom. It's totally expansive. Why? Because it's totally Messir Nefesh. So Imi is connected to Bina. It's connected to the idea of Messir Nefesh. And that's the first level of the first level of Kodesh. That's the highest level. Then you have Achoisi, my sister, Biti, my daughter. That's referring to on a spiritual level, it's referring to the idea of learning Torah and doing mitzvahs. And and, and was, even though it's, it says specifically Gemilus Chasadim, acts of kindness, but all the mitzvahs go into the category of Gemilus Chasadim, and that's the Kodesh of the th second and third Kodesh. Now, so you have like this. Even though what we just learned. What's the first Kaddish, Milmatalamayla, the we prayer? And that's the crown that Hashem puts on his head. <clears throat> and why is it, what's the connection with Kaddish? Because you're disconnecting. You're disconnecting from the world. So, Rebbe this. Even though we just learned that the Kaddish is the first Kaddish, Milmatalamayla, that's the one that Hashem puts on his head, which is referring to prayer and mysterious nefesh. Now, why is that? Because prayer and mysterious nefesh, you're disconnecting. Milmatalamayla, you're going on high. But nevertheless, even though that's unique, and that's the strong suit of prayer, but also Torah, even though Torah is Melamai Lamata, it's the opposite, and Gemilus Chesed is also Melamai Lamata, but they're also called Kaddish. Why? You're coming back into the world. Why is it called Kaddish? Because obviously they also have a component of creating a, a separation and a, a disconnect. Why is that? And everybody says like this. The author explains in Tanya that when a person learns Torah, and a person does mitzvah, so even though you're bringing down godliness into the world, so you're really connecting to the world, but nevertheless, it also has a component of mysterious nefesh. 
Why? Because when a person learns turning those mitzvahs, so even though it's from mind lamat, but it, it is connected to Messiah's because you're giving yourself over, you're totally disconnecting the world, you're bringing godliness into the world. So it has a component of Messiah's nefesh. It has a component of self-sacrifice. And self-sacrifice, what are you willing to give up self? That is also Kaddish. That's when you're separating and disconnecting, so to speak, from the physical reality. Now, but nevertheless, there's different levels, Rebbe says. In Messiah's nefesh, there's three levels. Just like the three levels of Kedusha, like we learned before in depth. In other words, even though the author writes in Tanya that when it comes to Torah and mitzvahs, there's Messiah's nefesh, but nevertheless, a mitzvah is limited. In Hebrew, it's called Medida Vahagbal, it's limited. Why? Because generally speaking, let's in general, there's 613 commandments. It's not 614, it's not 612. There's exactly a certain amount. And we know you're not allowed to add and you're not allowed to subtract. Not only that, every single mitzvah is confined to a time. Shabbos isn't Shabbos, not, not Thursday, not Monday. The holidays have a set time, etc. Every mitzvah has a place. A certain mitzvah is only applying to the land of Israel and so on and so forth. So the mitzvahs are A, there's only a certain amount of mitzvahs. B, they're tied to time and space. And, um, and like, Dr. brings a beautiful idea where there was, like, explained in, in another place in reference to uh, what it says in the Torah. The Torah says when Hashem instructed Aaron what to do, so the Torah tells us, Lahagid Shvachish Laren Shleishino. Tell us the praise of Aaron that he didn't change. That's the praise of Aaron. Hashem says to do it, but that's a praise you didn't change. For sure, that's, that's, that should be a given. You listen to Hashem. But the answer is like this no, because even though Aaron was so inspired and he was willing to go on mysterious nefesh and he was willing to go on self sacrifice to fulfill Hashem's commandments, but nevertheless, so when you go into mysterious nefesh, you lose focus from boundaries. So if it's prayer and you're Messiah's Nefesh and you spend an extra hour praying and you go deeper, okay, that's fine. But what happens when you're going to Messiah's Nefesh to do a mitzvah and instead of keeping Shabbos, only Shabbos, you do it Sunday and Monday, that's a problem. Because, let's say, I want to, I want to keep Shabbos another day. I want to keep kosher. I want to keep, uh, put on two pairs of tefillin and so on and so forth. That's a problem. Why? Because the, the, the mitzvahs are given in a time, given in a space, and even though you're inspired, even though you write from a serious nefesh, you have to stick to the formality of the mitzvah. And that's why, Deborah explains beautifully, that's the, the, the praise for Aaron. Even though Aaron was building the temple and he was doing everything what Hashem told him and it was a trend of excitement, Shino, he didn't add to the mitzvah. And that's an important component of mitzvah. You have to remember, even though we get excited, but you got to do the mitzvah the way it is. We can't change, we can't add, because mitzvahs are limited. So again, so you see that even though Messiah's nefesh is amazing, but when it comes to a mitzvah, it's still limited. It's limited to the mitzvah, of the, of the dimension of the mitzvah. So that is the first component of prayer, which basically, mamatal the Messiah's nefesh, etc. When you have a, then what do you have a higher level? The next Kaddish. The next Kaddish is the Kaddish we said of Torah. What is the idea of Torah? Torah, we said, that's drawing down the light down in this world. We're living in a physical world. When you learn Torah, you bring light into the world. Now, but, but what's important is to bring the Torah down into this world. As we know, it says clearly, Torah is not in heaven. Torah was given down to this world. And not only that, it says in the prophets, Hayusheves Baganim, which means he's sitting in the garden, and it says that our, our, our friends are coming to listen to our, 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 the words of Torah, which means, the Medrash explains on the verse of Shir Hashir, and what does that mean? That the Palmalia Shalmaila, the whole heavenly abode, and even Hashem, so to speak, comes down to hear Torah down here. So Torah is all about bringing the godliness down here, and God and His whole abode comes to hear what does Torah have to say down in this world? Now, even though Torah is down really in this world, but nevertheless, Torah is, Torah is Hashem. It's the Torah of Hashem. It's godly Torah. As we said, as, as it says clearly, I mean, when God gave, it says, when Hashemayim from heaven, you heard my voice. Torah is from heaven. And, up, and to the point that we know that Torah is not limited to time and space. Like it says, for example, whoever learns the laws of a, of, of a sacrifice, is if you brought the sacrifice, what do you mean? I have to bring the sacrifice? And the answer is because Torah has the power; it's not limited to time and space. Not only that, we we learned in the Talmud that uh, Torah is compared to fire, as it says clearly. How like the the words of Hashem are like fire, and as what does that mean? The power of Torah like fire. 
So even though Torah we said before is melmatlam, but Torah has a component melmatlam. It's like fire. What does that mean? That Torah is so on fire that you, Torah cannot be susceptible to impurities. So the same, just like fire is not as susceptible to impurities, the same thing also Torah is not susceptible to impurities. And we're talking about what type of impurity? A, a gross impurity. And as it says that in reference to the um, Kayin Gadol, the high priest Yom Kippur, that that purity did not, it didn't happen to him. And it was, even though he unfortunately got, he was able to, he, he, he come in contact with different levels of impurity, but in even a level of uh, the worst level of impurity, something dead, etc. But this type of impurity, even though it's easier to come in contact with, and as we know, for example, why is it easy? What do you mean e and easier? It's a, it's a lighter type of impurity because you only need to have um, to go through to uh, to go to the mikvah and, and to wait till night to become pure, to, uh, cl uh, clean. But nevertheless, the koyin did not experience it. Why didn't he? Because even though that it's such a it's such a simple purity, but nevertheless, it's it's a, a gross impurity. And and but but nevertheless, the koyin because he was in such a high state, the purity didn't affect him. As we know that Torah is not Makabal Tumah. Torah doesn't receive impurity. Why? Because compared to fire, just like fire cannot be, can become impure, the same thing also Torah can't become impure. And that's the quality that Torah has, an edge, so to speak, over mitzvot. Why? Because any mitzvah, you want to do a mitzvah, you have to do a mitzvah with something which is pure and something which is kosher. You can't do a mitzvah of something which is not pure and not kosher. Like it says clearly, in, in, it, it says clearly that in order to do holy work, you have to do it with purity and things which are kosher. However, when it comes to Torah, you learn about nine pure things in the Torah because Torah is not makabal tuma. Torah is much more powerful. So on one hand, we're saying the Torah is on high. It's so powerful. Fire, it doesn't become impure like the priest, etc. But nevertheless... What's the purpose of Torah? Not to stay on high. The purpose of Torah is to take that powerful light and bring it down to this world. As we know, Torah is not in heaven. And that's why Torah is compared to fire. And like the altar explains in fire. What's the idea of explaining to fire? Before we learned the idea of fire, it's, not, it's so powerful. But there's another component why it's compared to fire. Like the altar explains in, in, in Tanya, just like if you have fire. Fire. But in order for the fire to burn, you need a wick. You need, a, you need a candle for it to hold on to it. Without a wick, without the candle, it's going to go up to its source, into the source of fire and high, which is underneath the sphere of the, of the, of the moon, and you're not going to have fire down here. So in other words, you need to bring down the, you need the, 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 you need the, the wick to bring down the, the fire down here. The same thing also, since Torah is compared to fire, so you need Torah to come, in order to, you need Torah to come down into the physical, into the, into the physical world. So again, so what do you see? That Torah, on one hand, is very, very high, but Torah is all about drawing down the godliness down to this world. That's the Kodesh, bringing it down into this world. Now, this that it says, Kadoshin to you, you should be holy. Now, why should we be holy? So it says, Ki Kadoshani, because I'm holy. In other words, so Hashem is connecting our holiness of Torah, of mitzvahs, with the holiness of Hashem, of, Imatla, of Hashem, which is coming through prayer. In other words, the, pray, the, the holiness of Torah and mitzvahs is connected to Kadoshani, which that's the crown that Hashem put on himself. So everything comes from Kikadei Shani from the first component in prayer. What does that mean? The Rebbe explains like this. So we, what we're learning is, again, you have the holiness, which is prayer, and that Hashem put on his head. Then you have the Torah mitzvahs, but Torah mitzvahs are connected to prayer. Why is that? The Rebbe explains like this. The author explains in the Kut Torah and Parshish Bracha, and many, many places at length, based on what it says in the Talmud, that the prayer should be close to your bed. What does it mean, prayer should be close to your bed? That means that when you get up in the morning, the first thing you do is you go pray. So when do you study Torah? Afterwards. So you get up, you pray, and then you study Torah. After you study Torah, then you do mitzvahs. So, and like it says in, in Chazal, that you go from Beis HaKnesses, which are plays, to pray, to base some address, a place of study, and then you go do you know your your, your work in the world. <clears throat> so one of those. Let's recap. So the Rebbe saying is like this: Kedushin to you, which is referring to learning Torah and doing mitzvahs, drawing down in the, into this world. But Kedushin, everything comes from prayer. 
So the order is as follows. You get up in the morning, the first thing you have to pray. After you pray, then you learn Torah. After you learn Torah, then you can do, do mitzvahs. Service is one second. We all know that before you learn Torah, that before you pray, you also have to learn. Because how are you going to know what to pray? There is a component of learning before prayer. There is a, but, so it's a technical part that you're learning first. But it's not a quality of learning that comes first. The same thing also when it comes to putting on, doing the mitzvah, putting on your talis and putting on your film before you pray. That's only as a preparation for prayer. You know, so yeah, we learn before we pray. We put on talis and film, which are doing mitzvahs before, but it's all preparation. The, per, the first thing that we do intensely is a prayer. Torah study, to prepare for prayer. We learn chassidus. We learn uh, mysticism before we pray. Why? To prepare us for prayer. We put on talis and film to prepare us for the prayer. Or for example, we give charity before we pray. It's all to prepare us that the prayer should be strong. But the main work of doing mitzvahs, charity, and the same thing also by putting on a talis and tefillin, etc., that all goes under the category of derech heretz, which comes after prayer, after story story, and then we go on to do the mitzvahs. And um, Rabbi says, this is the whole purpose why our soul comes down to this world. Why do we come down to this world? It's all to create the elevation. In other words, to bring in those three holinesses into the world. Because the fact is, the world stands on these three things. Torah, the reason why we're here is to learn Torah, to pray, and to do mitzvahs. And not only the world stands, the world exists. The world exists based on these three components. And literally, when we do our avoidah, of learning Torah, well, actually let's do it first, praying and learning Torah and doing mitzvahs will come to the ultimate promise of Hashem. Hashem al God will be a king over the whole world. By Yoimahu in that day, yeah, Hashem Echad Shmaiacha, the name of Hashem, Hashem will be, and his name will be one. And other words, what does that mean practically? We're gonna have the three holinesses in a complete state. And that's why it says that Hashem will be the king. What is the king? What does, a, what does a king represent by the crown that he puts on his head? Well, the king is going to be complete. And then we're going to have the completion of learning Torah, the Torah of Mashiach, the ultimate of Torah. And also we're going to have the completion of doing mitzvahs, like, the, like it's explained at length in the Chassidic Discord of a Kach of the Rebbe Rosh, and also in Torah, and Torah's Chaim, about the completion, the ultimate, uh, full completion of doing mitzvahs. And so now is going to explain what it means practically. Rebbe says, we know that it says, in reference to Mashiach comes, so the prophet says, that your guy, the teacher, is not going to be in hiding. What does that mean practically? That not only is the energy that created going to be visible, and in Hebrew it's called koyach apoyal benifel, but not only is the energy it created, but literally we're going to have the revelation of yud kevavke. Vavke. Yudke Vavke is not going to be concealed. Now you look around, you see a physical world. But when Mashiach comes, you're going to see Yudke Vavke all over the place. As the verse says clearly in the prophets, Ki Shem Elokim. Yudke Vavke, the infinite name of Hashem, Elokim, is like the sun and the shield. So the shield is Elokim. That's what we got. That's the relationship we have in this world. And what's it protecting the Yudke Vavke? But when Mashiach comes, what's Hashem going to do? He's going to take the sun out of its shield. That means Yud Kei Vav Kei is going to be totally revealed. And then we're going to reach the level greater than the completion than when Hashem created the world. Because when Hashem created the world, what does it say? Bracious Bar Elokim, the beginning Hashem, Elokim, created the heaven and the earth. However, when Mashiach comes, it's going to be much greater. We're going to have Yud Kei Vav Kei. And why is that going to be? Because when the Mashiach comes, it says, Eile Toilois Peretz. In other words, it's going to be break all boundaries. It, you know, what does that mean practically? We're going to have the revelation of the crown that Hashem put on His hand. And, uh, and this revelation, how is that going to happen? How are we going to have the revelation of the crown, the Yudke Vavke? That comes literally through our work in Gullus. When we do our work in exile, like it says, in the, it, like it says clearly that um, when we, I'll say it in Hebrew, Shoyimin Cherpasan, when we hear our shame, the Enim Shivan Elaine, we don't answer. You know, someone can embarrass you, someone can ridicule you, but guess what? You don't respond. So what happens when a person behaves in a way, when someone mocks you, someone makes fun of you for learning Torah, for praying, for doing mitzvahs, for being religious, for being godly, and you don't say a word? You don't respond. There's a whole debate. Do I respond? 
Torah says clearly, you want to have the great reward? Don't say a word. Shoyimim cherpasa veinim ashivim. They hear, but they don't. Not like they're in denial. They didn't hear. You hear, but you don't respond. And on them, the verse says clearly, va'oyavav, those that love Hashem, which means, I love Hashem. I don't need to respond to anyone else. I learn, I pray, I do mitzvahs, and I love Hashem. My relationship with God, ketseis Hashem esh When Mashiach comes, the son, Yudkei Vavke, is going to go out of its shield. But that's going to be revealed. In other words, and there it explains, those that listen to the way we're being ridiculed, and, and clearly it spells out, the nations of the world tell the Jewish people, based on a verse in the prophets, where did your where did your love go? Where did Hashem go? Look, he forsook you in Gullus. Why did he leave you here totally forgotten? Why did Hashem leave us? Why did the Khatan, why did why the Khatan was referring to Hashem leave the Kal, the bride in exile? How much is the how much is the shear? How much is it enough that we should be in exile? Oh, Rebbe said in Yiddish, Rifel is the shir to Zion and Gullus. How much is the measurement to be in exile? But guess what? Rebbe says clearly, we don't say a word. And when we don't say a word, we merit for the gift of what it says. But Oyavov, we love Hashem. We don't have to respond. We're going to merit Ketseis Hashem is Rigorosai. The sun is going to come out of the shield. We're going to have a, we're going to benefit straight from Yudke Vavke. We're going to merit the, to the revelation of the Shemesh Hashem. Hashem is going to take out the sun from its shield and we're going to have literally the Yudke Vavke shining for us. And when we do our actions and our avoida in Golas, which means we're going to pray, we study, and we do mitzvahs in that order, we're going to merit very, very soon to the completion of doing mitzvahs because the ultimate level of doing mitzvahs is kemitzvahs ritzoynecha. We're doing the mitzvah as the will of Hashem. And that's going to be when Mashiach comes. And like, the, like the Rebbe Marash explains at length in the long Hasidic discourse of Akacha, that why is that going to be? Because since, what's going to happen? Why are we going to have the completion? He says something very powerful. Because when Mashiach comes, everything is going to be complete. For example, in the animal kingdom, is going to be complete. The, anim- the animals that we bring sacrifices. As it says clearly in the, in the prophets, the gar zavin keves. You're going to have the wolf will lie with the lamb. That's the ultimate completion in the animal kingdom. There's also going to be the completion in the in the human kingdom. Like it says clearly, Hashem. The whole world will be filled with knowing the knowledge of Hashem. Just like Kamayim Layama Chasim, when the water covers up the sea. That's how we're all going to know Hashem. And therefore, what's going to happen is since the animal kingdom is going to be complete, we're going to be complete. So the action of the Kabanot are going to be totally complete. And the same thing applies to all the mitzvahs. So that's in terms of what mitzvahs are going to be complete. We're also going to have the completion of Torah. We're going to learn the Torah of Mashiach. And literally we're going to learn all the secrets of the Torah. Like Rashi says, Yishikani Minashikas Piyu, we're going to learn all the powerful secrets of the Torah. So we're going to have the completion, completion of the mitzvahs, completion of Torah, and we're going to have the completion of the Jewish people. Why is that? Because what's going to come out is the Yechidah. We all have five levels to our soul. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chai, Yechida. The highest level of Yechida. Yechida, when does it ever come out? Once in a while, when we're threatened. But the Yechida, we're going to be living with our Yechida when Mashiach comes. And, and how is our Yechida going to come out? Because the Yechida HaKlalis, the global Yechida is going to come out. Mashiach is a global Yechida. When the global Mashiach comes out, our Yechida is going to come out. So we're going to have completion of mitzvahs. Completion of Torah and the completion of the Jewish people, Yechid is going to come out. And how does this come all come about? It happens through our actions and our work in Gullus. Like the Rambam writes very, very clearly that if someone does one action or one word or even one thought if in, in a good way, you literally tip the scale and you tips the whole world for good for, in, in, onto, the, onto the meritorious side. And you, you cause for yourself and for everybody else, a salvation and a true redemption and a success. And therefore, the Rebbe finished up and he said it should be with us. Literally, now, what should happen is, Bahoyo Hashem Lemelech HaKal Aretz. Hashem should be the king over the whole world. And that day will be Hashem Echad, God will be one, His name will be one. It's going to happen, Begula HaMittis V'Hashlema, with the redemption, the true and complete redemption, through Mashiach Tzadkenu, and the Rebbe finishes off, it should happen, Bimeheira V'Yameinu Mamash, quickly in our days, in a literal fashion. 
Obviously, it's a great, great, beautiful Hasidic discourse on Kedoshim. Well, let's hope and pray that we learn Torah, we pray, and we do mitzvahs, and we're not ashamed, that we don't say anything if anyone makes fun of us, and we'll all merit to the greatest revelation with coming of Mashiach very, very soon, as Rebbe said, hopefully right now. Have a great week, and hopefully our next class will be with Mashiach Tidkenu.